Look at this design. This is a simple beach villa booking listing. I tap on it and it opens up that listing. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. But now look at this design. It's exactly the same design. But now when I click it, look at these smooth animations. See how much better this is? The only difference between these two is that the first one has a simple dissolve animation, whereas the second one has micro interactions. Micro interactions are like little mini magic moments in the apps or websites. They're fun little details, like when a button changes color, when you click on it, or when a thumbs up pops up right after you like something. They make things feel a bit more smooth and fun. Today, we're gonna be looking at how do we create these micro interactions. Specifically, we are going to be designing a micro interaction on a card. And like always, link to the final Figma file is in the description of this video, so make sure to check that out. Now, let's dive in. Okay, so in this file, we have two cars. One of them is showing the initial search page where we have the listing of the beach house. And when we tap on it or click on it, it takes us to this stage or page, whatever you wanna call it. We have some text styles being used in these designs and for the colors I'm using just the local variables but this doesn't matter you can choose whatever way you want to do the styling. Now we would like to have some animation when I click on this listing and it opens up that listing just to make things more interesting. Currently if we go into the prototype view we have this dissolve animation on these two stages. Let's preview it to see how it looks. See if I click this it dissolves into the second card which is better than our direct jump but it's still a bit too boring and that's what separates a good design from a great one. So let's add some interesting micro interactions. Let me just duplicate and bring both of these cards down here. Now first thing first we need to think what micro interactions would a user expect when he clicks on the listing and reaches the final stage. We don't want to do something that user won't expect. For example, if this image is moving up here, it should grow there with an animation. Similarly, if I want this top bar action to move in, it should move from the top. And same thing goes for the footer, it should move in from the bottom. Finally, we should have like a subtle animation in this middle section and maybe do some animation on this guest favorite part to give it some more character, you know. So first, let's move this top bar out of the frame now. You have to be careful not to use the mouse to drag it out, otherwise it will move out of the frame, which we don't want. See, it has moved out of our final stage frame, and that's exactly what we don't want. So let's undo it and just use the keyboard arrow keys to move it up just like this, or you can use this Y position to move it outside the frame. Now, when we are at this point of animation, I also want the bottom footer to be outside. So let's just move it outside the frame just like this. Now for the middle section, I don't want it to be visible at this stage of animation. But before we do that, what I'm going to do is just hide this little text by reducing the opacity to zero and just close down these award icons just a little bit. And you will see why I did this in just a few minutes. Beautiful. Now we just select both of these frames and move them a little bit down here and reduce the opacity to zero because this is not going to be visible in this frame and we want it to animate from this point moving forward. Perfect. Now we can see we only have the image in this frame. So let's add an interaction. Go to prototype and connect this frame to this frame. I want the trigger to be click as we want it to be triggered when we click on this beach house listing. And in animation, we are going to set smart animate. For the curve, let's set it to ease out curve for now. Here we can also control the duration of the animation. Let's just set it to 500 milliseconds for now and let's test it out. See, now when I click on it, it has this animation to it. It looks nice, but it's a bit too slow and isn't quite natural. Now remember one thing, for the smart animate to work, both the layers must have exactly the same names. In this example, both layers for the image are called listing image. Let's make it more interesting. I'm gonna call this flow micro interactions and if I open this interaction again, smart animate is exactly what we want, but the curve isn't quite what we exactly need. So we can choose from these different curve options, but let's try this custom spring option. In the custom spring options, we can create a custom bouncy kind of transition. Duration of this animation can be controlled by this little line over here, and we can move this horizontally, and we can see that it changes the duration. And we can use this ball here to control the bounciness and the damping of the animation. Uh, see this curve above this horizontal line? This shows how much it will bounce. I'm going to keep it very close to the horizontal line and 
have a very subtle bounce and duration can be somewhere around close to 550 milliseconds so now let's try it out click and look we have this bouncing animation uh, it's a bit too slow still so we can reduce the duration to somewhere close to 500 just like this and perfect now let's see yep it is now a very natural and smooth animation but this is just the first part of the animation so let's duplicate this frame one more time and let's rename these to animation 1 and animation 2 now for the second part of the the animation in the animation tool frame i'm gonna bring this toolbar and the footer in so select the toolbar from this frame and move it a bit down so it's visible just like this and similarly let's move the footer inside this frame and place it just where we want it just like this perfect let's animate this now go to prototype and connect both of these frames this time the trigger is going to be after delay because I want it to happen automatically and the delay of the after delay trigger would be one millisecond. So it happens quickly as soon as the image animation ends. We are going to keep this animation settings the same. Just reduce the duration slightly to something like 430. Now let's just test it out. It's looking great. First the image animates and then the footer and the toolbar animate inside. Beautiful. Now let's just duplicate this frame one more time and this time we are going to select both of these middle sections and set the opacity to 100% just like this and just move them to their original position where we exactly want. Now before we add animation let's create a micro interaction for this guest favorite part. To do that let's duplicate this frame one more time. See now for micro interactions you're gonna have to duplicate the frames a bunch of times so don't worry about that. Now in this frame what I want is that these award icons should move on the sides and then the text should fade in. So let's align these icons to each side just like this. Now I don't want to make the text visible at this stage otherwise it will appear before the icons move. So first the animation of the icons should complete and then the text should appear. So let's just duplicate this frame one last time and in this frame set the text opacity back to 100%. Finally it's time to add interactions. So from animation 2 frame to animation 3 frame just like this. I'm going to keep the settings of the animations the same. Then from the three frame to frame number four, trigger will be after delay with a delay of one millisecond. Actually, we didn't set the trigger in this interaction. So let's select this and set the trigger to after delay with one millisecond, just like this. And finally, from the fourth frame to the fifth frame, and again, after delay with one millisecond. Let's test this out. It's looking great. Let's try it one more time. Yep. It's looking great. Uh, actually, I think so. The middle section is appearing a bit too fast. So let's select the interactions between them and increase the duration a bit, just like this. And let's just do this for the rest of them as well. Just select each interaction and just slow down the custom spring duration. Let's try it one more time. Yep, it's looking very natural and very interesting. Let's preview it in full screen. Yep, it's looking great, very subtle very natural animation see how it compares to the simple dissolve animation this one is just so boring whereas this micro interaction feels so much better and this is why motion design and micro interactions are what separates a good design from a great one hope you have learned something today and if you want more micro interaction videos leave a comment below and if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this i have a bunch of figma animations on my channel some of them are showing right here on the screen do check them out thanks for watching see you in the next one